Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk through how we convert from point slope form to slope intercept form for linear functions. So as a reminder, here are the formulas for our point slope form and the slope intercept form. So what often happens is that when we have a point slope form, our answers might look different from each other because we could choose any point we wanted. So we often are asked to convert our final answers into slope intercept form. This is sort of our universal way to represent lines, and so to be able to convert from point slope to slope intercept is very useful. So I'm actually going to walk us through the sort of algebraic steps we take each time to do this conversion, and then we'll practice it on some examples. So if we're starting with point slope form, we have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And we're wanting to get this to look like y equals mx plus b. So I'm noticing that in the final y equals mx plus b, we have y on the left-hand side by itself, and there are no parentheses. Everything's been multiplied out. So first, what I'm going to do is multiply the slope m into the factor x minus x1. So this looks like m times x and m times x1. So I have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus m times x1. Now the y equals mx plus b has y by itself. So what I want to do is get y by itself by adding that y1 over to the right hand side. So now I have y equals mx minus mx1 plus y1. And this is actually basically it. So m is the slope, m times x, and then everything left over is our vertical intercept, our b value. So we can actually write this as y equals mx plus, and then in parentheses, negative mx1 plus y1. So this is the slope mx plus the intercept b, which is actually this negative mx1 plus y1. So I only show this because these are basically the exact same steps we take every single time we do this conversion in sort of a general way. But I think it'll make more sense as we do the specific examples and you'll see these steps repeated each time. All right, so for examples, I'm actually going to use some equations of lines that we found in the point slope form video. So here are our equations. We have F, G, and H. And let's go ahead and convert each of these to slope intercept form. So starting with f, we have y plus 1 is equal to negative 1 half times the quantity x minus 3. So we want to get this into y equals mx plus b form. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute the slope. So that negative 1 half gets multiplied by x and negative 3. So I have y plus 1 on the left hand side. And then the right hand side is negative one half times x minus one half times negative three. So I've distributed that slope into both of those terms. So this looks a little messy, let's simplify it. So I have y plus one on the left hand side still, and then I'm going to write this as negative one half x and then plus three over two. So negative one half times negative three becomes a positive. So we do the 3 times 1, that's 3, still divided by 2. All right, now I want to isolate the y because our final version is y equals mx plus b. So what I'll do is subtract 1 over to the right hand side to get y by itself. So now I have y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 over 2 minus 1. So we've isolated y and now we're almost there. So we want y equals mx plus b. We have the mx, and now we just want the b to look a little better. So I need to combine the 3 over 2 and the minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite 1 as 2 over 2. So now I have y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2. And now I can combine these into one fraction. So 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2 is just 1 over 2. So 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. And now we have my final answer. So it's y equals negative one half x plus one half. And this is now in slope intercept form. Okay, so that was our first example. Let's do this now on the second example. So here for g, we had two different formulas that represent the same line. So when we simplify these and rewrite them in slope intercept form, this should be the same. 
So they look different now, but once we do the math to write them in slope intercept, they should look like the same function and the same equation. So let's start with y minus 5 equals 3 times x minus 1. So my first step is to distribute the slope so that 3 will get multiplied to both terms. So I have y minus 5 still on the left hand side, and then I have 3 times x minus 3 times 1. So from here I want to isolate the y. I'm going to add 5 to the right hand side in order to get y by itself. So now I have y equals 3x minus 3 plus 5. So I've isolated y, I have the mx, that's 3x, and now I just need to combine those last two terms to get my plus b. So when I do negative 3 plus 5, I'm getting 2, and my final answer is y equals 3x plus 2. Okay, now we should be able to repeat this process for the other version of the equation. So I'm starting with y minus 14 equals 3 times x minus 4. So let's first distribute that slope. 3 gets multiplied by x and by 4. So I have y minus 14 on the left hand side is equal to 3 times x minus 3 times 4 on the right hand side. Now we want to isolate y, so I'm going to add that 14 over to the right hand side. So I'm getting y is equal to 3x minus 12, and now I've added that plus 14. Okay, so we're almost there. We just need to combine those two terms to become the vertical intercept. So when I do minus 12 plus 14, I'm getting a positive 2. And that gets me my final answer as y equals 3x plus 2. All right, and there we go. This is why we often are asked to put our final answer in slope intercept form. Here we got the same solution, even though the initial way we wrote the equations looked quite different. So this is our way we can be sure that we've written the same equation of the line. All right, let's repeat this one last time with the function h. So here we have y minus 0 is equal to 4 thirds times x minus 2. So our first step is still to distribute the slope. So 4 thirds gets multiplied by x and negative 2. This looks like y minus 0 is equal to 4 thirds times x plus 4 thirds times negative 2. Now we actually already have the y isolated because that minus 0 doesn't affect the function at all. So we already have a y on the left hand side and now we just need to simplify the rest of it. So I'm looking at 4 thirds x and then when I distribute that negative 2 into the fraction, I have minus 8 over 3. So my final answer is y equals 4 thirds x minus 8 thirds. And there we go. That's how we convert that to slope intercept form. All right, that's it for this video. Just some examples of how we convert from point slope to slope intercept form. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.